Father, we thank you, we praise you, Lord, as we are gathered again to listen to your word. Lord, we thank you that you are going to speak to us even more deeper as we were listening from morning. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us to pay attention to your word and not get distracted. And through your word, make the correction that is needed so that we live a life that is pleasing to you. Our relationship with you, our dedication, our devotion takes us deeper and deeper with you. We thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. Hallelujah. So we wrote last, the last sentence that we wrote was a part of faith is being faithful and our people of faith are faithful. Praise God. So when I'm saying I want to walk in faith with Jesus, okay, it means that my life is going to be a life of being faithful to his word. Praise God. Last night I was speaking and I said, God loves fat people. Hello? God loves fat people. So those who are slim, God doesn't love you. Does that mean? What I mean by the word fat is not that fat. I mean F-A-T means a person who is faithful, a person who is always available to God, and a person who is teachable. So if you take any of the examples in the Bible, those who are heroes in the Bible, you'll find all of them have, were fat people. They were faithful, they were available to God, and they were extremely teachable. Praise God. So when I'm saying I walk by faith and not by sight, it means I am faithful, submissive, agreeing to what the word of God says. Amen. 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 So the more and more I become faithful to God, it means the more and more I make my self-correction, not by force, but because of love to Jesus, I make those corrections so that I continue in my relationship, I continue with my fellowship with Jesus. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So write down, when I am perfect with Jesus, when I am perfect towards Jesus, When I'm perfect towards Jesus, I am dedicated I am dedicated my heart my heart is turned towards him my heart is turned towards him And ready for him and ready for him and ready for him to perfect me and ready for him to perfect me. Praise God. Now, now when we started our journey with Jesus, we were totally extremely wild because our way of thinking was trained by the things of this world. Is that right? Hello. Anybody from Bombay? Do you know this? When we used to play, when we were small, Kati and Bhatti. Was it there in, in, in Goa also? Yes. Huh? Okay. So when we were small, we used to play that game Kati and Bhatti. When I don't want to talk to you, I would do like this. That means I'm not going to talk to you. When I'm doing like this, that means I'm your friend again. Right? 
But did our parents, when they saw us doing that, said that it is extremely illegal to play that game? Because in the kingdom of God, there is no kati. So our parents did not understand, and the game began. We grew up. We went to college again. The kati bati was there. Then we got married, and then also the kati bati is there with the in-laws. And now we are working there. Also, the kati bati is there. Hello. So the world began to teach us. many things which we said it's all right but as we came to jesus and began to go into his word we began to realize that the life that i am living and the life that jesus came to give me is so very different and that jesus is not forcing me jesus will never force anybody but his love will change you so now when i am having a relationship with jesus i am saying jesus i want to walk with you means i want to walk with your word day and night hallelujah i want to dedicate my life to you and when that becomes your extreme decision praise god that's the time the lord begins to work in us and begins to transform us change us and bring us into a newness of life hallelujah so is it going to be a one time encounter or is it a every day relationship every day process hallelujah 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 so those who know me before my conversion they still can't believe that my life could change so much so my life changing is not by my will power but my life changing is because of my relationship with jesus and this relationship is not based on emotion or a feeling this relationship is based on what he said in his word hallelujah so when i am going to make corrections through his word is it going to be comfortable now it's going to be uncomfortable but the result will be victory yes hallelujah hallelujah now now somebody said to me it's so difficult to apply the word of god is it true now all those who drive your car and you got caught up in the traffic do you get frustrated yes so now in your frustration do you bang the car in front and bang the car behind and bang the car on the side because you are frustrated because you understand if i bang a car i'll be in more trouble in the same way the day you understand that the life that i'm living in the flesh is only going to lead me into destruction in the future I cannot see the destruction now but I can see that this is going to lead me into destruction in the future. Hallelujah. You said you got three children. Okay. They all came from your womb. So that means they all came from this garage. Okay. Now if I have to ask you how did you create the heart? but it came from your garage you said so how did you create the heart you got a heart have you seen it but you have how did mama create your eyes all that she did was to take a seed that god had given her called the egg and the seed of the father called the sperm when they both came together the fertilization took place once the process began until it was aborted the process kept on 
maturing each day and at maturity after 9 months came the whole baby in the same way jesus is saying that his word is a seed and when the seed is planted in a heart and we allow the process of that seed to work in a heart through the holy spirit the process begins and that process of that word begins to bring the change in our life hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. just as when the baby comes out you are marvel to see that what started was so small that you can't even see with your natural eye but when the whole process is over a complicated baby with trillions and trillions and trillions of cells working together the whole body with so many organs working together a healthy baby comes out of that womb after 9 months in the same way the lord is saying when i have my dedicated relationship with god through the word and i allow that word to work in me there comes a transformation a change in my life and this change is never from my will power but this change is from the presence of jesus through his word hallelujah hallelujah and that is a relationship where i am allowing jesus to be the lord of my life where he begins to rule over my life he begins to perfect me every day of my life and to do that on one side he gives me the craving for the word praise god and on the other side he allows the circumstances to come into my life and when the circumstances come now i have an option to live my old life or to live the new life that has come through his word a person who makes a decision to rely on the word of god and and obey the word of god and and humble himself in the word of god not only his life is changed his very attitude to the word of god will raise him to a destination beyond his capacity beyond his ability hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. in my wildest dream i could never ever imagine that i will be doing this work in my life all my life in school i hated the textbook all my life in school i always wanted to be in sports in fights but not the textbook i grew up i started my work in a business there also it was all about machine there was nothing to do with the books but when i came to jesus in desperation when i had made all the mess in my life he gave me his word and his word first of all began to deal with me and get me out of my fear out of my depression out of my financial crisis out of my health issues everything and once i was free i had the choice to take my freedom and go back and live my life the way i wanted to to say to jesus that this life no longer belongs to me it belongs to you i choose to be your sir your slave your servant by choice i'll give you an example once there was an auction and in that auction there was a slave and the bidding started and there was this young man who put his price and there was another person who kept on increasing the price and it went so much that the young man 
who wanted to purchase the slave he gave everything he had to buy the slave and the hammer came down and they brought the slave and gave it to him he opened the chains and everything and did not speak a word to the slave and he just began to walk when the slave saw that the chains were broken and he got his freedom he began to run in his freedom in the opposite direction and he began to run and the person who purchased him did not even look at that slave running away he just began to walk as the slave kept on running he began to think how much was the price paid by this person to purchase me one two he was the one who broke the chains he was the one who gave me the freedom he was the one who would never chase me to catch me again and he began to wonder what kind of a person is he who paid such a price and he doesn't even force me to come after him and as he is running he begins to realize that this owner should be full of compassion full of kindness full of love and he stops running looks at that person from a distance and makes a decision to run back to him and this young man is still walking and the slave is running behind and he comes to him and says i want to follow you and he says why because i just want that love that you showed me by setting me free and that slave is me and that young man is jesus i am not standing here by force i am not standing here as a duty i am standing here only because i love him so when you love him his love begins to change you the motive is only one thing lord i want to be with you hallelujah like arun said when a boy and a girl are sitting and unless the boy says to the girl that he loves how will the girl know there are many a times there is no words exchange but yet love keeps growing with actions i remember my old old life i would go and tell my wife all the time i love her okay and she would say you know when you say you love me i have so much of difficulty in believing what you say because your words and your actions they don't match so i had always had a problem to say i love you because the next line would be the evidence of your action does not show that you love me so she would always say to me please don't say those words because those words are so powerful and what you have made of those words is absolutely cheap but when my life began to change praise god and then when i began to tell her she began to tell me again i love you too so so it is with jesus he loves us and that's why uh, he he showed his love god so loved the world that he that he that he gave that he gave that he gave god so loved the world that he gave now in our life when we love somebody do are we the givers or are we the takers your birthday and somebody brought for you a very expensive gift what will you say i love you <laughs> and your birthday another person did not bring anything for you i hate you <laughs> now when you, when you when you read that word god so love the world the world you know what the lord explained to me is he he gave me an explanation when i was asking him uh, what is this world he said if you take Ten most dangerous men, most dangerous men, ten, and keep them in a room, 
and then you take your daughter your wife or any lady very close to you and send that lady in that room what do you think those 10 men will do to that lady hello can you imagine they will be worse than animals to treat that lady physically mentally and that's exactly what happened to me the lord said when i am sending my son to this world this world every human being is a sinner who has a power to rebel to the highest degree are you following and in this world where the whole human race is on one side and my son without sin has to enter into that area and love them in spite of their action against him the whole of the kingdom of darkness against my one son who has come into this world not as god but as man Can you imagine what must be the heart of the father to see his son going there to this planet earth and only when he goes as man and fights the battle as man then only you and I can be set free Would we ever send our child in a place where your child is going to be tortured and nailed on the cross and you 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 have every power to stop it but you still allow everything to happen so that only through that the whole human race will be saved what do you call that love hello can we ever in our life understand the depth of his love and that's what the bible says god so loved the world that means the worst of the worst sinners he still loved them he did not love the sin in them but he loved the sinner praise god that he gave a son as a substitute for the punishment that we deserved he took our place on that cross as a substitute and took every punishment and died on the cross so that now we who can't see in the physical but believe because it's written in the scripture when we believe it then all those who believe will not perish but have eternal life hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. so the whole kingdom of god works on believing the whole kingdom of god works on relationship the lord wants relationship he is a person whom you cannot see who is in spirit and he speaks to us through his word and when you have that kind of a relationship then that 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 same jesus who has the power to deliver you begins to deliver you from every kind of addictions or any kind of weakness or anything that you're going through where satan has a hold over your life hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. so we must ask a question to ourselves am i having a relationship with jesus a person whom i cannot see but i can surely experience him through his written word hallelujah. hallelujah you know many years back 
I spoke to the Lord and I say, Lord, for me, the Bible is your love letter written to me. I don't care whether Matthew wrote it, John wrote it, Luke wrote it, or whoever wrote it. For me, when I read, it is you who wrote it for me and you're talking to me. And I make this decision with you. If my Bible, which is leather bonded, at that time I used to use a Bible, now I'm using the electronic, is leather bonded. Supposing that Bible was not leather bonded, but covered with feathers. And on those feathers it would have been written, leather bonded Bible cover. Okay, but it is not leather bonded, but it is made of feathers. Okay, but because it is written on the Bible leather bonded, I would choose to believe that it is leather bonded. Amparu, I would choose to believe that it is leather bonded in spite of it being with made of feathers. In other words, I choose to believe whatever is written even though I might not understand at the moment but I'll continue to believe because it is written in the Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. So if somebody has to ask what do you think is God's mission for your life? What is God interested in doing in your life? Can somebody tell me? What do you think God is interested in doing in your life? Hello? Okay, if I put it this way, what is God's plan and purpose for you in your life? I'll read it for you. Hello? Are you with me? Yes. yes. For whom he did foreknow, that is in Romans chapter 8 verse 29. Romans chapter 8 verse 29 For whom he did foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed. Say that conformed. Say that again. Again. Conformed. F-O-R-M-E-D Now conform means a continuous transformation. A continuous change. <coughs> now there will be one of the two things that happens. Amparu. Let's get a little water. It's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. There will be one of the two things that will happen. When we are living in this world, even though we are baptized the world is going to give us knowledge day and night is that right hello yes. the world's knowledge is always going to contradict to god's word <coughs> the world's knowledge is always going to be based on facts and the bible knowledge is always spiritual and it's based on truths so when my mind is full of the knowledge of the world, I am being conformed into the world system. I'm going to live by sight and not by faith. But here God is saying, all those whom he foreknow, he predestinate. In, in, in other words, it is God's pre-planned, set-up plan for all of us to be conformed to the image of His Son. So what is God's top priority? To make us more and more like His Son. Hallelujah. 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 Confirmed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So, so, so firstborn, firstborn. So, 
on this planet earth right now there are two kinds of human beings one human being which comes from adam and eve with the power to rebel against god there's another human race on this planet earth which is coming from jesus christ those who have received him and got baptized and got born again that sin nature is nailed on the cross and this human beings have god nature in them and jesus is the first born of this god nature man on this earth the day he resurrected from the dead i'm also looking we are studying from morning that our mind should be full of the lord and when these two children got oh it was your dress so they all wanted to see how beautiful you look hallelujah hallelujah so are we challenged every day with knowledge so every day is there going to be a change yes the change will be either in the world system or the god system so who makes that change ourselves how with our own responses hallelujah so now the question is god is interested in making us like his son jesus we are interested in making ourselves to imitate jesus or we are more interested in getting the blessing which is our top priority god's top priority is that we learn to die to our flesh what is our, our top priority how to get pleasure from the flesh hello so whatever is my top priority is going to decide that's what i'm going to become in the future so can a person know his future right now oh yeah whatever a person is practicing every day is what he's going to become in the future if your daily routine is to live by the word then your future is going to be extremely supernatural a blessing in the kingdom of god so what you do every day decides your destination are you following yes. hallelujah. hallelujah i never ever thought that i would be in uk preaching the word of god because when i started my journey with god i was a depressed psychiatric patient don't even know his name can't even recognize his wife and children lost all his business having no house having no money to eat food a total hopeless condition and now i encounter jesus and my journey with jesus begins and when my journey with jesus begins i get into extreme craving for the word of god i became like a word addict if you sit with me and talk to me the whole day i can only talk to you anything and everything that is concerning about the bible you ask me anything else i'm not interested the whole day hallelujah hallelujah now what has that done to me it has changed my whole life it has changed my whole future and it has not only changed me the change in me has affected my family as well you know when i was earning money at a very young age huge amount i had told my wife at the age of 45 i'm going to retire and i'm going to use this money to go to hawaii what was my intention to enjoy the pleasure of sin 
God took me to that same place, Hawaii. But this time, on a conference. And it was on a Sunday, and everybody had planned to go to different places on sightseeing. And they asked me, where are you going? I said, I'm not yet decided. And I said, Lord, can you get me connected to some drug addicts so that I'm going to get some chance to preach? And I met a person. And we just began to become friends. And I said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to clean up a garage. And I said, can I come? He said, no, you can't come. I said, why? He said, I'm not going to pay you. I said, listen, I can help you, but I don't need uh, whatever payment comes. It's yours. I'm not going to take it, but I can come and help you. And three hours, we worked together to clean up somebody's garage. And that lady was a Jehovah witness. And she began to ask me, what are you doing here, young man? And I began to tell her my story. Praise God. Amen. So in three hours of garage cleaning, I got a chance to bear witness to her. I got a chance to bear witness to this man. And after three hours, she made the payment. And then I said, come on, let's go for lunch. He said, I'm not taking you. I said, I do not want your money. I am going to give you lunch. He said, why are you doing this? I said, because I love you. And then after lunch, I said, uh, do you have a gang? He said, yeah. I said, can we meet up? He said, yeah. I, in one hour? Yeah. So I said, let me go and have a quick shower and then we meet up. And he gave me a chance to meet all his friends. And he said, this crazy man did all this. And I said, I did it because I love Jesus. And I got a chance to speak to them for two and a half hours. By the time I reached back to the uh, hotel where all the other people came, they were showing me all different photographs. Some went into the sea, some went on the mountain, some went here, some went there. And they asked me, where did you go? I said, I was with a bunch of drug addicts talking to them about Jesus. Praise God. And when I, when I finished talking and all that, that night, the Lord said to me, I gave you the full freedom. You are in Hawaii. Your desire. Nobody was with you. You could have gone wherever you wanted. And the pleasure of sin, what you wanted to do, you had all the freedom to do it. Then why did you not go? I said, because I love you. So when you love Jesus, when you love Jesus, day and night you are looking for some opportunity to give Jesus to somebody because Jesus is restless. He came to serve. And he is looking for opportunity to serve. And the best part is he is looking first of all an opportunity to serve me first. And when he begins to serve me, he says, come on, now that I have served you and you know how what I am doing in your life, can you go and catch somebody who is hopeless so that I can serve him as well the way I served you? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now are you sweating or Jesus is sweating? And what are you doing? Just going and sharing. Now look at the next line so that you understand. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. Now, did Jesus call all of us? Yes. Did we say, did we respond to that call? Yes, that's why we are sitting here. And whom he called, them he also justified. Wow. Say that, justified. Say that again, justified. Let me give you an example of justified. The word justified means your trial has been taken and you have been found not guilty. It means you are found as if you have never sinned in your life. Now let me explain to you what is this justified. Supposing I am traveling with you in a car. Okay. And I am driving and we are talking. Deliberately or ignorantly I jumped a red signal. And on the opposite side, the cop was waiting and he stopped the car. And he said, you have to pay a fine of 
500 pounds or six months imprisonment. Now I do not have 500 pounds. So will he put me behind bars according to the law? Come on. Yes. So when he is about to arrest me, you who is sitting next to me, you open your purse and you hand over the 500 pounds to the cop. My question to you is, will he take that money? Yes. Now when he took that money, will he put me in the prison now? Has the penalty paid in full? Praise God. Now will he give the receipt? Now will he give the receipt to me or to you? Who gave the money? I or you? Hello, hello, who gave the money to the cop? You. Now he will give the receipt to you or to me? He will give the receipt to me. Okay. Now I took the receipt and we began to drive again. And as we reached the next signal, I did not jump. I just crossed the signal. Everything was legal. And there comes another cop and stops my car. And he says, you broke the signal two signals back and I've got a video and I've come to arrest you. Now, what will you do? Hello, what will you do? Now, when I show the receipt, will that cop arrest me for the crime that the penalty has been paid in full? What will the receipt say? Paid in full. Praise God. So is there any arrest warrant against me now? But had I committed the blunder? But who paid the money? My friend, that's you. In the same way, when we have committed sin, is that law demanding us to be thrown into the hell? Punishment on the cross. Everything. Now, did Jesus commit sin? But was he illegally put under punishment for something that he did not do? I did. Hello. Yes. So has he paid the punishment in full yes. with his life, yes. with his blood? Yes. Before leaving, has he given you the receipt? Yes. Now when the devil comes and tells you, you have done this, this and this, are you supposed to show the receipt? Yes. So now... All those who are in Christ Jesus, is there any more condemnation? No. no, why not? We are justified by the blood of Jesus. There is no more condemnation. There is no more punishment because the punishment has been paid in full by Jesus, by his own life and blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why he says, those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Say that glory. glory. Say that glory. glory. Say that again. Glory. You know what glory means? Glory means God's supernatural power is manifested where you can see it with your natural eyes. Last night, uh, who were there last night? Only you, a few of them were there. The first lady who was sick for 20 years. When she got healed, she did not even smile. And the people who were there also never smiled. Nobody clapped. And everybody was serious. The reason was that she got healed so quickly by showing the receipt that people were amazed how can the 20 year old sickness just die off from a body within a minute hello the reason is I taught her to show the receipt and when the receipt was shown by faith and the confirmation came with the healing. That's when 
a person can see God's glory. I cannot see Jesus. I cannot see God the Father. I cannot see Holy Spirit. But I can see God's glory every time I believe in the word of God. I believe in that word which has the power to destroy the work of Satan. So our life in Christ Jesus is a life of what? Glory. So you might go to a place where there are people who are sick. And by the time you leave that place, everybody is healed. What is that? Glory. Glory. You might find somebody who is blind. And by the time you finish your conversation, that person is saying, I can see. What is that? Glory. You find a marriage which is broken and fighting like cats and dogs. And by the time you finish your counseling, they are embracing each other. What is that? Glory. God has called us to live a life of glory. And when will that happen? When I have a relationship with Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you, tell, can you talk to yourself and say to yourself, my life is a life full of glory? Because, because that's what the Bible says. He not only called you, he cleaned you, washed you with no stain of sin anymore. And now he is, oh Jesus, thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord, Jesus. You know what, what he has done? There's only one Jesus, right? Hello. And Satan thought, I'm going to kill him. So he nailed him on the cross and Jesus began to smile. That's why the Bible says he endured the cross with joy. Because unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides by itself. But if it dies, hey, if it dies, it produces much more fruit. Do you know what that means? In each one of us is Jesus. Satan had to fight one Jesus. Now he has to fight how many Jesus? You did not follow. You, 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 you did not follow. No, 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 no. You did not follow. You did not follow. Let me, let me, let me make it clear to you. Now when Jesus rose and went back to heaven, what did he tell his disciples? You wait there in Jerusalem. Don't leave. I'm going to send you somebody who is exactly like me. And he will be with you till the end of time and he will be with you to teach you, lead you and show you the things that I have spoken to you. So they were all in hiding in fear and then came the day of Pentecost. The Spirit of God came upon them. Now the same Peter who denied Jesus, where is he? He is standing there without a pulpit and preaching the gospel and 3,000 souls are changed. He has destroyed the kingdom of darkness. In one sermon, 3,000 souls were changed from darkness to light. Now whose work is that? Jesus. So Satan had to, had to deal with one Jesus. Now he had to deal with 120 Jesus. Because 120 were there on the day of Pentecost. Are you understanding? And those 3,000, they received whom? Now he had to deal with how many? Oh, you, you, you. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? If you understand that Jesus in you is the one who serves, now he, the devil doesn't have to fight you. He has to fight Jesus. Who is in you? Yeah. And, and because Jesus is in you, when you go and stand, demons start trembling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But do we believe that Jesus in us is the same Jesus who was with the disciples? And he's only waiting for us to cooperate with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, last night, uh, last afternoon, I came from California. And uh, in the evening we had a service and by the time we went home it was late night, might be 
around 11.30. Yeah, praise God. So, my question is, if a person has traveled from US to UK, will he go and do some ministry work after landing? Or will he go to sleep? Why do you go to sleep? Oh, so that means you are working on flight. Tired of what? Tired of what? Oh, you are a steward? You are serving people? Or you are the pilot? It's all in the mind. In the mind you are saying, it's all about me, I need some rest. And Jesus is saying, can you put that aside? There are people out there who need help. Come on, soldier, let's go and do the mission. I told you, God loves which people? Hello, God loves which people? Fat people. What's the first one? They are faithful. What's the second one? They get jet lag. Hello? They need rest. Fat people don't need rest. Fat people have rest in their mind. You can be on the bed for 10 hours and still be restless. And a fat person can be not fat. A person who is having a relationship with Jesus, he can be in extreme rest even in the midst of the greatest trial. Let me give you some example. Was uh, Paul and Silas thrown into the prison yes. for casting out demons yes. of a slave girl? Yes. Now were they chained? Yes. Praise God. Now they both are in the prison and Silas is telling Paul, my mama told me not to go with you because wherever you go, you create problems. Why did you have to cast that demon out? See, now, now you are in the prison and I came with you. I am also in the prison. I am going to die. God, do something, save me. Do you find them doing that? What are they doing? Uh, and they are saying in the prison, no problem, praise God. If they put us to death, praise the Lord. I will meet my master quickly. And if I live, praise God, I'm still going to preach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Were they praising God? Yes. Were they at rest? Yes. Or were they restless? Yes. Were they at peace? Yes. Now, with that kind of an attitude, did the prison doors flung open? Yes. Were they set free? Yes. Did the jailer get converted? So every time you are in trouble, somebody is going to get changed. Somebody is going to get deliverance. But when that thing will happen is only when you are in trouble and you got rest in your mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if you don't have rest in your mind and you are restless, then you will be tortured and tortured and tortured. So what's the battle? The battle is, am I having rest in my relationship with Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Has anybody ever gone on flight? <laughs> Don't laugh, I'm asking you. Yes. And when you book the ticket, do you meet the pilot? Let's say your flight is tomorrow at 6 o'clock in the morning. Will you get up at 8 o'clock? Will you start packing the bag? But how do you know you will get a seat? Huh? Sorry? Only on the paper? Wow! And, and, and when you went to the airport, the big queue, now what happens? Still at rest? Yes. And then you got a boarding pass. And now the queue, all of them are standing there. Is still at rest? What if they take you standing? <laughs> when it comes to all these tickets and everything, our mind is so much at rest. Can we do the same when it comes to the word of God? That we teach our mind 
to stay at rest because Jesus has promised you. Because our mind is not at rest, we have switched off the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, will anything supernatural operate in your life? No. Will you see any glory? No. Because everything in God's kingdom operates through believing. Everything in kingdom of darkness operates through believing. Whom are you believing? If you are believing Jesus, every day your life is full of glory. If you are believing your, uh, your problems, then every day your life is so full of torture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So write down. Since the fall of man, since the fall of man, God has been in the process since the fall of man, God has been in the process of restoring, God has been in the process of restoring the fullness of his presence, God has been in the process of restoring the fullness of his presence to humanity, fullness of his presence to humanity. So, 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 my friend, is it God's desire that we walk in his fullness, that we walk in his glory, that we walk with him, yeah. that we walk victorious, yeah. that we walk like Jesus, going around looking at anybody in the kingdom of darkness and destroying the kingdom of darkness? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So, are we like Jesus? Hello? Yes. Are we like Jesus? Yes. And is Jesus in us? Yes. But are we believing that Jesus is in us? And because we don't believe, we don't make ourselves available. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I always ask uh, this question. Are there any Christians here? Hello, are there any Christians here? Yes. No? That also they are not sure. <laughs> Hello, are you a Christian? Yes. 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 Now, you are a Catholic Christian, praise God. Do you have hands? Yes. I can prove to you, you don't have hands. Because if you have hands, the Bible says, those who believe in me, when they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. When you have somebody sick at home, do you lay hands or do you call the preacher? I know some of the families, their children have begun to learn so much that when the child sees the mama sick, the child says, Mama, let me lay hands on you and get the sickness out of you. Because, because it, 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 in the Lord's kingdom, it's not how many years you believe and how old you are. It's how much you believe. So can a child like that go and kill cancer and come out? Yeah. Can a child like that cast out demons? Yeah. Can a child like that heal people of incurable diseases? Yes. But do we teach our children that way? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Write down. Since the day of Pentecost, Jesus has been able to fill us up. Since the day of Pentecost, Jesus has been able to fill us up. Jesus has been able to fill us up and change us and change us from the inside out and change us from the inside out. Praise God. 
so 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 is jesus changing us from inside or outside okay can right actions change wrong thinking hello can right actions change wrong thinking yes or no yes. okay let me change the action now change the words can right thinking change wrong actions which one is right and which one is wrong can right action change wrong thinking can right thinking change wrong think wrong actions do you know what the gospel does the gospel is all about changing your thinking if you want to change somebody's life don't go and tell him to change his action that person will not change but go and tell that person through the word and change his thinking when the thinking has changed the action will change by default have you ever committed sin hello yes. can anybody see to dear who has committed sin ever commit one action of sin without first thinking about it not possible before the action comes there is always going to be thinking that thinking will produce what feelings and emotions that feelings and emotions will do what draw you to take that decision what the decision will do open the door for action now did adam and eve go into wrong action first or the words of satan change their thinking first are are you following are you following so if i want my life to change can i stop doing the bad thing without changing my thinking let me give an ex- excellent example we know during the lenten season many of the men stop drinking for how many days 38 days on the 39 day they have already started small sip by the 39th night they are already swimming on the 40th day they are under water hello now how come in spite of 38 days not drinking on the 39th at the 40th day you find them totally tun because they have only changed their action not change their thinking that's why the bible says the kingdom of heaven is close at hand repent why is it saying repent repentance does not mean change of action repentance means change of thinking in such a way that you make a very strong decision i don't want to think about it anymore neither do i want to do it anymore so it's all about change of thinking Hallelujah. Did Jesus heal people? Yes. But before healing was he teaching, preaching and then healing? So what was preaching and teaching doing? Changing their thinking. So the level to which your thinking has changed is the level to which your life has changed. So what is the word of God doing? Changing your thinking praise god hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah so so is god is jesus going to change us from outside or from inside yes. now is it possible for me to show you a good smile outside and inside give you all the gallies or you don't know after you shifted to uk you forgot about it but this is very common in india i can keep on smiling and give you a good screen saver you're from africa 
You don't know India? You have been to India? Wow! You have been to Bangalore, that's where I live? Oh yeah! Praise God! And in Bangalore, we can look at you and smile. And inside, there can be a volcano. And you won't even know. Possible? Yes. Hello? Anybody married? Yes. Hello? Can you show a smile outside and be really annoyed with the spouse inside? Can you smile at your in-laws and inside be... <laughs> Come on, I'm asking you. So is Jesus interested in changing outside or inside? inside? Because when your inside changes, outside will change by default. So where's the problem? The problem is not my action. The problem is my thinking. What is dangerous? Action or thinking? What did Jesus say? A person who is murdering is dangerous or the person who is hating is dangerous? Because when you hate your brother, you have already become a murderer. So, is the act of adultery dangerous or a thought of adultery dangerous? Are you, are you following? Yes. Praise God. So, so, when Jesus is going to change me from inside, I must accept his love, his leadership, his presence in my life. Hallelujah. So write down. Is it interesting? Yes. yes, very interesting. I know. We have to accept. We have to accept. Jesus' love. Leadership. And presence. Jesus Jesus is Jesus is patient Praise God I remember one of the priests when he was teaching us in the seminary now after I got changed uh, in Bombay that time I was staying in Bombay uh, we who are lay people we can go to the seminary and study for two years and do the word ministry so there was one priest who came and he said these words which has not left my heart and mind he said the day a person understands that Jesus loves him then he can go and commit as many sins as he can what did he say? The day the person begins to know Jesus' love, then he can go and commit as many sins as he can. What does that mean? The day you understand Jesus' love, your desire for sin is gone. Your desire for him and his kingdom is to the peak. And that's why the Bible says, Seek you first what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then everything else will be added unto you. So the world will say, Roti Kapraur Makan. What are you struggling every day for? Hello. And what did Jesus say? Roti, kapra or makan will be added unto you. What are you supposed to seek? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. So are we following Jesus' formula or the world's formula? That's why you are always on lack. Hello. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Ah, have you heard the word condemnation? Guilt feeling. Now, when a person is in condemnation, when a person is in guilt, will that person ever, ever be able to move forward in life? One of the powerful tools that the devil uses is guilt. And that's what happened to Adam and Eve. When they, when they ate the fruit, praise God, and now they saw what had happened to them. The glory of God was gone. They went and hid behind the tree. Why were they hiding behind the tree? Because guilt will make you go away from God. Hallelujah. 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 But when a person begins to understand God's love, he is able to overcome condemnation and guilt and he is drawn to God. Let's take an example. You are Jesus and you met the Samaritan woman at the well. Now, is this woman already living in guilt? Yes. Is she living in condemnation? Yes. That's why she's not coming to the well when people are around because she knows they are going to talk about her and she knows her shameful life. Is that right? Okay. Now when she meets Jesus and Jesus speaks about the living waters, is she attracted to the waters? Yeah. So she says, can you please give me that water? What is Jesus saying now? Go and call your husband. Now what does she say? I don't have any husband. And Jesus says, very right, you don't have any husband. You had five. And now the sixth one is not your husband with whom you are living. Right? Now, is that what Jesus spoke going to put her to shame? going to give her guilt, condemnation. Now, can she just stop the conversation and walk out? Can she get annoyed with Jesus? Come on, let's talk, man. Yes. yes. But what does she do? She talks to Jesus and says, Oh, you are a prophet. Now, has she changed the topic? Smart lady? Hello? Now, is Jesus saying, Hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Let's not talk about profit and all that. Let's talk about sin. Is Jesus doing that? No. He knows that she is living in sin. He has pointed her about sin. But now he's talking about God. He's talking about the true worshippers who worship God in spirit and in truth. He is attracting her towards God. Praise God. Now, did this woman get attracted to what Jesus said? Now, did she leave Jesus with her earthen pot? Yes. Did she go to the town? Now, was she the same woman who avoided all these people? Yes. But now when she encountered Jesus, did she go to the town and meet some people or did she went and met the elders? When she experienced the compassion of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the forgiving love of Jesus, she was delivered of shame, guilt, condemnation, that she went to the same people who were pointing fingers to her and began to tell them, Hey, listen, I found my Savior. I found the Messiah. I found the one who loves me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So condemnation, shame, the mistakes that we have done in the past will draw us away from Jesus. But when you experience Jesus' forgiving love, you experience his leadership, you experience his compassion, that will draw us much, much closer and closer to Jesus, delivering us from shame, guilt, 
and condemnation. Praise God. Praise God. Wasn't she a powerful evangelist that she brought the whole village or the whole town to Jesus? Did Jesus do any miracle in her? Hello? He did the biggest miracle in her. He changed her heart. Now did she want the man with whom she was living? No. She found the perfect man, the seventh man in her life and only he could satisfy her. None of, uh, or I can put it this way, no human being can satisfy your love. Because everybody's love is, is conditional. In the morning the person can say I love you so much. In the afternoon the same person can say I hate you. Because your performance was not good. Hello. Yes. So to receive somebody's love you have to perform a lot. And if you miss your performance then the, the ratio of love falls down. But when it comes to Jesus it is not depending on your performance. It's all depending on his performance for you. Hey! Amen. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. See, if a person is having a relationship and is saying, I am going to experience love through my spouse, through my children, through my parents, through my brother, through my sister, let me tell you, all that love is conditional. And it's so fragile that it can shift any moment. And the moment it starts shifting, you are more and more in hurt and in pain. Is that right? But the day you make a decision that my love doesn't come from any of them. My love comes from Jesus. And in my relationship with anybody, it's not what I receive from them. It is all about what I give to them. Then there's no problem. Hello? Let's say I came for the service and I'm expecting a few pounds from you. And when the service got over, the collection tray went around and I got only five pounds. Now will I be happy? After, after God doing so many things over here and blessing everybody and everybody went with joy. But did I go with joy? Why not? Because I got only five pounds. What was my expectation? Much higher. And I got only five. So now, my expectation was from whom? From you? Yes. Did I get satisfied? No. So am I going with joy or am I going grumbling? But I did not come with any expectation from you because my expectation comes from God. So now, am I going with joy? Yes. I'll give you a testimony, okay? This happened to me in Bahrain. I, I was preaching in a church and this priest told me, uh, the, it was a three days retreat, and this priest told me, you are not going visiting homes. I said, okay father, but what if a person is sick? He said, yes, you can go and pray, but there has to be no money transaction. I said, surely, because I do not have any love offering in any of my services, so no problem. So, he then said, I do not know you, but I'll be sitting and listening to all that you're preaching. And if I find that it's anything wrong, I'll stop you. I said, okay, Father. So the two days were over, and the third day, uh, you know, my flight was, as soon as the meeting is over, I have to take a flight. So I said, Father, I might not be able to meet you after the service, that's why I've come before the service to thank you for everything. And he said, listening to what you are preaching, I want you to take a love offering today. And I'm giving you permission to take the love offering. And I said, Father, there are about, uh, you know, the balcony was full, the, this the church was full. And I said, it's going to take 15 minutes. And that 15 minutes of love offering is going to stop me from preaching for 15 minutes. So I said, if you are willing for me to take a love offering, 
can you extend my time of 15 minutes? I don't want to take a love offering, but if you can give me 15 minutes more. He said, okay, let's do it. Amparo, somebody opened the door. So, so that last 15 minutes, I was talking on faith. And I said, people who have got lumps in their body, please come. The Lord wants to heal you. And there were about 12 of them. And I began to ask them, how many lumps you got? And there was this one lady. And when I asked her, how many lumps you got? She said, I don't know. I said, what do you mean? I don't know. She put her sleeves on top. They were, uh, you can't count lumps all over her body. And I said, praise God. And we began to pray. And I said, which one would be easy? To cast one lump out or to cast all the lumps out? Oh, praise God. That's more easy, right? <laughs> and I said, okay. So we'll start with the person who has got plenty of lumps. And we started praying and casting out that spirit. And she began to manifest. And when she fell down, and, and, and as she was manifesting, she put her hand on her sleeves and she found all the lumps had disappeared. So by the time she started screaming, all the lumps are gone. The others who were in the queue, in one, in one shot, they all got healed. Okay. Now when they all got healed, I said, please close your eyes. Jesus is here. Let's worship the Lord. And I told the choir, begin to sing. Praise God. And we led into the, pray, into the worship. And my time was running out and I ran out of the church. And the advantage was everybody's eyes were closed. <laughs> By the time they opened their eyes, the preacher was missing. Now I reached the airport, I got onto the flight to go to Kuwait and I was rejoicing on the flight and I was saying, wow, Holy Spirit, we did it again, praise God. And the devil kept on torturing me. He said there were about a thousand people on that day. Okay. Even if everybody would have given one dinari, it was about 130 rupees at that time. You would have got at least 1,30,000. You lost it. And I said, I did not lose it. Those 12 people who got healed and people who witnessed that, the faith in the church has gone so high and I am all excited about it. And we finished and, and I took, came to quit. And that evening I was at the service and a man came to me and said, I got a dream. And in the dream, the Lord told me to come for this service and give you a check of 10 lakhs. <laughs> Tell me, my friend, which one is better? That God sends a person the 10 lakhs did not come into my account. It went into the ministry account for ministry work. But which one is better? That you are a believer or you are a beggar? Praise God. So when you know that you, he loves you, will he not pay your bills? Yes. Will he not take care of you? Yes. So why are you worried? The very reason that I'm worried is a proof that I doubt is love. How many of you, when you were small, as this small, uh, were wondering when you came from school, uh, what if mom would have eaten up all the food and kept empty vessels? <laughs> and when you reached home, the mom said, uh, son, today I never cook food for anybody. And there was one fish. The mom ate all the fish and she kept the thorns. Can a mom do that? In fact, the mom will say, when everybody is eating one, a small piece of fish and she's not eating, she'll say, I don't feel like eating today. But in deep inside, she likes to eat that fish, but because of love, she is ready to give that fish to the child. How many fishes you ate and did not give them? She does that, right? No? She does that? She eats it, doesn't give to you. <laughs> you. She gives it to you all and she even says, today I don't have a mood to eat. Yeah, yeah, she does that. Yeah. Why do you think she does that? But was she like this before she got married? Ask her. 
Ask her no. Once she gets married and the baby comes in her hand, you know, before marriage, she was not even lifting the kachara daba. The mama had to leave the kachara daba out. But once she is married, now she is cleaning the poo also of the baby. Isn't that right, my dear sisters? Yes. When, when you were not married and mama said, just figure, ah, hmm. <laughs> but you are going to get married. Yeah, my husband is going to do that. All those big dialogues. But when the baby came and the poo came, now oh, the husband is cleaning or you are cleaning? Hello? And why are you doing that? Hey, why are you doing that? And you are doing that when the baby grows up. I'll tell you the reason. When the baby grows up, the baby will look after her. That's why she's doing it. Yeah? Is it that way? Or is it selfless? So you can trust your mama, but you can't trust God. Praise God. Every time you are worried, remember you are doubting His love. Praise God. So write down. Is it interesting? Yes. Oh yeah, praise God. Jesus loves us. Write down. Condemnation Condemnation makes people Condemnation makes people draw back from Jesus. Condemnation makes people draw back from Jesus. Don't let failure, don't let failure make you draw back from God. Don't let failure make you draw back from God and keep you in bondage and keep you in bondage. You know, you know one of the very powerful tool of Satan is to keep reminding you of your failures, to keep reminding you of your mistakes, to keep reminding you of uh, making the same um, same disobedience over and over again, so that so that when you uh, keep on meditating on that, he begins to tell you, "Hey, what's the use? Uh, you went for confession." And that same evening you did the same thing. Hello? By doing that, Satan wants your heart to be so ardent that he wants to break your relationship with God. Now, is God's love based on my action? Hello? So, when I have disobeyed God, does he stop loving me? Hello. Okay, let's take for example, Adam and Eve committed sin. Did God come in search of them? Did God know that they had committed sin? Yet he came in search of them? So when you and I have fallen and disobeyed God, does God abandon us, reject us, or still he comes in search of us? Why is he coming in search of us? Because of love. He wants us back with him. Because if we are not coming back with him, then Satan is going to destroy us, torture us, torment us, and, and make our life miserable. God loves us unconditionally. But what is the devil going to put in a person's mind? Guilt, condemnation, failures, mistakes, so that the person will never ever go forward. He remains in a bondage. Hallelujah. 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 
Bondage is anything that you fear. He begins to put that in your mind. God doesn't love you anymore. God hates you. God is punishing you. Have you ever heard this word? God is punishing you. What a lie man. When you were small, your mama never said, you do this, God will punish you. Come on. Uh, does God punish you? Huh? So all that lapdas which are coming in your life are why what? They are not punishment. It is simple principle. What I sow is what I reap. So does God need to punish me? Or is it what I sowed is I am reaping? Now with the love of Jesus what happens? The wrong seeds that I sowed which is supposed to bring the wrong harvest Jesus interferes in uh, that harvest and destroys it and turns it into mercy, forgiveness, compassion and grace. For the life that I lived, I deserve extreme punishment. My past life. But when I look at my past life, I begin to realize how much God has loved for me. Let me give you an example. Supposing one of your family, uh, supposing you are the only member surviving, every member of your family has been killed by one man. Every member. And you are the only person alive. And after a long time, this murderer has been caught and is in the court. What would you do to that person? If you are the lawyer, he has killed people in hundreds or thousands, you can say. What would be your verdict to him? Cut in small, small pieces every day. Come on. Yes or no? And if you had to be God, what would be your judgment to him? Forgiveness? Really? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let me ask you about a man. His name is Saul who killed so many Christians. According to what he did, does he deserve forgiveness? No. But on the way to Damascus, is he still going to kill more Christians? Yes. Does he encounter Jesus? Now, does Jesus punish him? Or does he show him mercy? Does he give him a ministry? So if Paul can be saved and Paul can be forgiven, what about you and me? If Paul can say, my hands are clean. You know when Paul is giving a description, he's saying, my hands are clean, I have not done any harm to anybody. Isn't that the biggest lie? Hello? Yes. Has he killed people? Yes. So if you go to Saul and say, uh, if you go to Paul and say, hey listen, you killed so many Christians. You know what Paul would say? That's Saul who killed people. I'm Paul. But you look the same. Yeah, I'm not, I look the same, but I'm not the same. When I was Saul, I did not have Jesus. Now I'm Paul, I have Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it might be in your life you were Saul. But when you met Jesus, now you are Paul. Touch your neighbor and say, hi Paul. You look like Saul, but you are Paul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Now these are the testimonies which help me to realize that there is no more condemnation. Every account of mine is nailed on the cross. I am forgiven, I am anointed, sanctified, justified, redeemed by the blood of Jesus, set free. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Thank you Jesus. So write down. Jesus wants us to be, Jesus wants to be, Jesus wants to be 
your daily Jesus wants to be your daily life manager daily life manager as as our daily bread as our daily bread so jesus wants to be in our life what daily our daily bread or our daily life manager praise god now do you need food every day for what to become fat very good oh what do you want why do you want food every day because you need energy so your stomach uses food to convert food into calories praise god in the same way jesus is your daily bread who converts the daily bread into a power called faith and what is my daily bread his word is my daily bread so do i need the nourishment of his bread every day so where do i get my nourishment from from the word of god praise god hallelujah so write down my nourishment my nourishment and fulfillment my nourishment and my fulfillment are in him my nourishment and my fulfillment are in him praise god now now the question is is your nourishment coming from jesus or from somebody else really are you dependent on jesus or somebody some human being okay 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 let me put it this way have you seen the ecg graph of a of a man does it go this way okay so if i am getting my nourishment from any human being can his response to me be perfect or imperfect so can i be committed to a imperfect person which one would be better to be committed to a perfect person or imperfect person okay. so every day we have choices to be committed to a perfect person or imperfect person is jesus perfect yes. so are you committed to him or imperfect people so if you are committed to perfect person and an imperfect person is coming against you what is the perfect person telling you again 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 if you are committed to a perfect person jesus and an imperfect person so might be your spouse might be your loved ones might be your colleague who is coming against you what will this perfect person jesus tell you he will straight away start and say love your enemies so if i am committed to the perfect person then what will be my response to an imperfect person who is coming against me but if i am committed to the imperfect person what is he going to teach me love my enemies or fight with your enemy so most of all the time my relationship is with whom imperfect people a perfect person jesus so what's my battle every day to be committed to jesus who is perfect and i'm surrounded by imperfect people 
So this perfect person is saying to me, you yourself are imperfect, but I love you perfectly. And with the love and forgiveness that I'm giving you, now you take that nourishment and go and give the same to that imperfect person who is coming against you. So when you are having a relationship with the perfect person, Jesus, are you getting fulfilled through him or are you trying to get your fulfillment through an imperfect person? That's why when I'm committed to an imperfect person and expecting from an imperfect person, my love ratio or my love degree for that person keeps going up and down. But if now I become a one-sided I receive from Jesus, I am having a relationship with the imperfect person, but one-sided, not expecting anything in return, then I am having a great satisfied life. Do you know, do you know, when do you get hurt when you were expecting and the expectations were not met? But when you don't expect anything from anybody, but you expect everything from God, that he supplies all your needs. Now, are you in hurt? Hello? Praise God. So get your relationship with Jesus and let his word nourish you. Let his word fulfill you. Let his word satisfy you. You will enjoy life in abundance. The more you become self-centered, the more you become self-dependent, the more you become self-sufficient, you are in trouble. But every moment you are God-dependent, you are always victorious. And that's the battle. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Write down. Whatever whatever I think whatever I think my life would be whatever I think my life would be I need to break the mold I need to break the mold today I need to break the mold today praise God interesting are you ready? Do you have dreams? Do you have desires? Is God longing to fulfill our desires and our dreams? Come on, talk here. Yeah, come on. If you don't talk, I feel sleepy. Can we talk? Yes. See, see, even if we give wrong answers, we are all learning. Even I'm learning. Okay. Now, is a God a God who shatters dreams? No. That's where you went wrong. He is the God who shatters our dreams. And only when our dreams are shattered, then only his dreams take birth in us. Can I explain to you? Yes. Okay. Let's say... You both. Example, huh? don't feel offended. Okay. You both got engaged. Then she went to a cousin's house for three months and there was no phone. Okay, no phone. And after she came back, after three months, you find her very chubby, extremely healthy. And on the fourth month, you come to know she's pregnant. What would be your thoughts about her are your dreams shattered I'm asking you come on has she betrayed you 
Does she have a secret lover? Come on. She was engaged to you. You had so many dreams that you would have children. You would have a great time and all that. Your dreams are shattered. You. You had a dream that I would get married to him. I will have a great time and all that. And one fine day, uh, an angel comes and says, uh, you are going to bear a son. And his name is Jesus. Are your dreams shattered? If that angel had to come and talk to you, would these three be there? Come on! Has God shattered Mother Mary's dream? No. I don't understand. Who said no? This is your baby? So you can't have relationship with your husband? Will she come? Didn't she have a desire to have her own children? Was she also excited that I am going to get married very soon? Her dream is shattered. And what must be happening to Joseph? And in spite of all that, did Joseph love his wife? Uh, uh, not his wife, Mary? He loved her so much, at the same time, he could not bear the betrayal that he made a decision that he will not bring her in public, but quietly divorce her. What if Joseph was annoyed with Mary in such a way that he brought the notice in the public and said, the baby in a womb is not mine. Do you know what would happen? Mary would have been stoned to death. What about Jesus? He would be dead. So was Joseph's dream shattered? Was Mother Mary's dream shattered? But did they both get annoyed with God? Did they get into depression? Or did they accept and began to move with God? Now, was their dream big or what God made in their life was big? So in the same way in our life, when we have dreams, God will see to it that that dream is shattered and he wants to see our attitude. Am I going with God? Then it gives birth to God's dream. But when our desires are not fulfilled, are we going with God or are we cursing everybody? Are you understanding? So the next time your dream gets aborted, start getting excited that God, something is going to take birth and I'm all excited. And because when your dreams get shattered, it's the most painful time. Is that right? Now for a woman, the painful time is a signal that she is in labor pain. That's, that labor pain is saying your baby is matured. You can't see your baby but your baby is matured and it's time to give birth to a baby. So the labor pain is giving a signal to the mama your time of giving birth to a baby or your miracle is has come. It's mature. In the same way, when you are walking with God and your dreams get shattered, it's your labor pain to give birth to a dream that is of God. I'll give you an example. I was in business and in my business, because of my wrong things, I lost everything in life. Now many a times I would think, God, you could have changed me without me losing. Hello? But you allowed those things to happen. And it was only when I lost everything and I came rock bottom 
and there was no hope, I turned to God. He brought me out. Okay. After eight or nine years, by then my business grew up again. I had two more factories and I began to do good in my business and all that. And all of a sudden, one, one fine day, he asked me to shut down my business. Can you shut down your business when your business is flourishing? Hello? No. But he asked me. And I said, yes, I will, I'm ready to do it. But I was at the same time extremely fearful. The fear was when he spoke to me at that time, I had a lot of boldness and courage. But if I would delay it for a number of days, then my decision would change. Are you understanding? The next morning, I went and shut down my factory with the raw material in the factory work in process. I did not even complete it. Because the fear was I might change my decision. On that day it looked extremely foolish because my dreams were shattered. But now when I look back I can say without a doubt the best thing that happened in my life was the day when he asked me to shut down and start doing this full time. Because there was an option. On one side the factory was giving me money. On the other side the Lord was saying I have called you to do this purpose for me. Which one do you want to pick up? Praise God. Praise God. So I found in the Bible dreams are shattered. And when the dreams are shattered and at that time you are not offended, you are walking in love with God, it gives birth to an extremely big, big, big assignment and purpose in your life. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Is it good? Yes. So my life was first that I wanted to be in Hawaii. That got cancelled. Then my life was that I'm going to do business and in my business I'm going to do part-time. That got cancelled. Then came this business. Now God has taken me into another business. Praise God. Now I am I have left Goa and I am travelling around the world. So I have no settled place anywhere. Hello? So now I'm no, I am waiting for the new dream to take birth and I don't know what. Are, are you understanding? Because when God tells you to do something, it's very dear to you. But when you give up and say, yes, I'm ready to give up everything and walk with you, the mold is destroyed. And I'm saying, God, here I am available for you. Tell me, what do you want me to do for you? Praise God. What I found what I found in this secret was that when I go from here, I'm having a growth retreat. First time, not in Goa, but in Gujarat. So I had to find a place. Okay? And at the same time, I said to God that all these years, 23 years, that I've served you free, and every retreat of ours is always free. There are no charges. And even now, Lord, I want to do this retreat in Goa, in, in, in Gujarat, absolutely free. So I began to search for retreat houses and I began to ask them. So I found that the charges were about 500 rupees per day. So our retreat is for 10 days. So it would be 5,000 per head. Are, are you understanding what I'm saying? 
and if 300 people come what would be the cost 15 lakhs and if 400 people come what is the cost 20 lakhs and I said to God all these years we were doing it free and we never took uh, the logistics about how much was the cost are you following and I said Lord I am ready to go for it and we fixed it up in Gujarat and that's the time the Lord showed me that every time I had a retreat in Goa out of 400 300 would be what Goans but now when it is in Gujarat the crowd expected is more than 400 and out of that 400 everybody mostly are from Gujarat so every six months if I have it in different states what am I doing planting seeds in different places in India which I would not do are you understanding are you understanding previously whenever I would go any country I had to take a u-turn come back to Goa finish those four days and then go back now he's showing me that once you start your mission you go from place to place I'm going to give you new countries new places and you don't even have to bother about anything just focus on getting seeds across the world So this time when I was in California, my wife would see me, uh, you know, in a room and I was studying the Bible and she saw me two, three times crying. So she asked me, I know God is speaking to you. Where is he taking you? I said to Africa. And she said, when will you be back? I said, I don't know what is waiting for me in Africa. But I know one thing, my life is going to be in Africa the place where there is malaria the place where there is extreme hardship but I am so excited so this trip when I am going to Africa for 12 days in January the expected crowd is a hundred thousand people So I know and I know that my time is running out and I have to run at a high speed so I have to break many molds of comfort and keep running till I finish my assignment before I leave this planet earth. So the seeds where I planted I can see now that those seeds which are planted have become into garden and new leaders have taken over new soldiers have taken over so I can shift my place to some other place because we who are the light of the world are supposed to carry Jesus with us and Jesus is saying I want you to take me to the place of darkness where I can serve those people and set them free. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why that is why in my schedule you will never see a single day off. Right up to Easter you will see me every day working. So my wife said when are, where are, when are we going to meet? I said a week before Easter. Praise God. Praise God. And I thank God for giving me a family who understands the call and lets me go cheerfully. Praise God. Praise God. Isn't it lovely to see somebody's, a child's mother, the mother who was suffering from cancer and she's on her deathbed and you reach on time and you minister and she gets healed and she comes back and she hugs her mother, uh, hugs her, 
a baby uh, can you buy that with money no and that's what i see every day and that's why you can't take holiday because uh, yes uh, uh, yesterday there was a person and i said do you want want to share your testimony he said no let my wife come and share okay this woman would was on the verge of committing suicide and uh, one of our friend in the office said to her there's a man coming from india why don't you go and listen to him and then whatever you want to do you do and that day she came for the service and she sat down and heard the word the word touched her so much that she decided not to go ahead two years later on she came to meet me after two years and she said to me that you know i was on the verge of committing suicide and on and when she was sharing this my daughter was there and she said 13th of february i had decided to commit suicide so i was listening and i was crying and crying and crying and my daughter was wondering why is dad crying so much when she finished the testimony i said to her baby how many times you don't see me on a birthday how many times you don't see me on mom and my wedding anniversary i'm not there for my birthday i'm not there for their birthday i'm not there for anniversary i'm not there for anything and i said to her she just said 13th of february 14th of february is your mom's birthday if i had to decide to stay up to the 14th and then move on the 15th and go to that place to preach this woman would have been dead do you know how we celebrate our anniversary the day we land the day i land and i reach home i change the calendar date in my mind and we celebrate our birthday sometimes it is one month late sometimes it is 15 days early but that's how we live praise god so i have to change this mold of what i'm thinking and get into this mold because jesus in me is desperate longing to serve others hallelujah hallelujah praise god at that time the baby was i think one and a half year yesterday i asked that man how old is your baby he said 12 years old imagine this baby would have been without a mother that's why i love my job it's a fantastic job and this job is given to everybody you don't need to go for an interview you are already chosen already selected already anointed already blessed all everything is already imparted to you all that you need is to say yes i saw a documentary when i was in california of a of a lady from holland whom the lord told her to go to mongolia she doesn't even know where is mongolia and and she packs a bag and she goes to mongolia not knowing where she is going and when she goes there and she sees the people over there she begins to speak to them jesus and she is staying there in mongolia and she was saying i never knew that when god called me on a mission to come to mongolia today even if i have to go back i can't go back and the reason i can't go back because i have become a total unfit to go back to my country because he has changed my heart completely when i even if i go there to my country i will not um, fit in that environment he has changed me in such a way that i my home now has become mongolia teaching people whom who have never heard about jesus hallelujah hallelujah time is running out and we got to go and share jesus with everybody so can we break the mold today and believe that jesus in you is willing to do amazing things through you 
is only waiting for you to go and talk to somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that can happen only when you have a great relationship with God. Your life becomes a blessing to somebody. As long as you are with the mindset, God bless me, you are living a miserable life. But the day your mold changes to, Lord, I am a blessing to others, you experience heaven backing you up in everything. Most of the time, our prayers are what? Lord bless me, or Lord, I am a blessing to others. Take me, Lord, where I can be a blessing to others. Which one? <coughs> can we talk? Yes. Which one? Yes. Do, you, do you know a relationship with Jesus is a relationship just like a marriage spouse? He and you are one. That's why he said, the branch that abides in me will only bear fruit. It's just like a marriage. Is the bridegroom, we are the bride. And when we go with him in that relationship, now you begin to witness he as a bridegroom protecting you, teaching you, leading you, strengthening you, doing everything for you. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So right on. Jesus has poured his life. Jesus has poured his life out for you. Jesus has poured his life out for you. That is us. What a marriage me and Jesus can make when I do the same, when I do the same. Praise God. So are we supposed to imitate Jesus? Praise God. So right on the next paragraph, this is very interesting and let's not miss it. It is not our mistakes. Very, very important. It is not our mistakes that messes us up. It is not our mistakes that messes us, messes us up. It's quitting. It's quitting. That is, it is drawing back, drawing back from his loving corrections, from his loving corrections. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now my question to you is, did Jesus ever rebuke uh, the disciples for their mistakes? Hello? But did he rebuke them for their unbelief? Again, again. Were they all the time quarreling? Now did Jesus rebuke them? No. But every time they operated in unbelief, did he rebuke them by saying, where's your faith? So Jesus understands that we are going to make mistakes. But what happens is, in the midst of that mistakes, 
Jesus wants us to make the correction. The quicker we make the correction, the trial is over. How many of us agree with me that many a times the problems in our life is because we ourselves have caused the problem? Let me give an example. Did the prodigal son have problem in his house? No. Did he have a desire to leave his father's house? Did he want to enjoy the pleasure of sin in the other kingdom? Did he fulfill his desire? Now, when he came to that problem, was the problem created by he himself? So is it possible that in our life, that we, instead of making correction to what Jesus is saying, we want to fulfill the pleasure of flesh and we create our own problems? Example, okay? Are you studying? Okay. Is that your mobile? Moms? You don't have mobile? You have, okay. Now, is mom, dad working hard to send you to school? Yes. Are they paying your fees? Yes. Are they taking care of you? Are they supplying all your needs? And what are they asking you? Go and work and bring that money back or only study. What is their top priority in your life? To give your best in your studies. Okay. Now, in spite of everything is provided, you use your mobile for chatting and spend all your time and many other things. Will that decision or will that action have an effect on your studies? Okay. Now you, you graduated and you got very low marks. Will that affect your life? But let's say you used every facility that was given to you in the most maximum way and you got extremely high marks. Will you be able to get through the interview quickly? So, if you are struggling, have you created that storm by yourself? Are you, are you following? See, see, God has given to everybody an investment. You know what's that investment? 24 hours every day. None of us can freeze it. None of us can save it. We all have to spend it. Now, it's your choice how you want to spend it. Some can spend it as an investment. Some of them can spend it as a liability. Some of them can spend it as an investment by upgrading the knowledge that they need for their career or whatever. Some of them can uh, uh, spend the time in alcohol, in clubs and in all that. Now one has invested in asset, one has invested in liability. After a number of weeks and months, will what you have invested come back as a maturity result. Hello. Yes. But has God given everybody 24 hours? Yes. Has God given everybody the Bible? Yes. Are we making any investment? What Arun was saying, to carry the Bible, read the Bible, study the Bible, is that a good investment? Yes. But do we use that investment? I might be watching some movies. Good entertainment. But after the ent entertainment is over, when the harvest comes, will that what you watched on movie solve your problem? So, do we all have the 24 hours in uh, spending time? Can you ask a question? How do you spend your time? Is it an investment or a liability? Hallelujah. Are you a person who is always known to solve the problem or are you a person who is always known to create a problem? 
in that 24 hours that God has given you, you are creating a problem, your life is going to be miserable. But in that 24 hours, you are investing your knowledge base, how you can be a blessing to solve people's problem. Fantastic. Your future is going to be amazing. Even though Joseph was a slave, did he invest his time in solving problems or creating problems? And what do you do? Nobody wants to talk. Praise God. I'm not giving you any breaks now. Hallelujah. Is the Lord talking to us? Yes. The children are small. And the mama brings these children to this place. And they are listening. Might be. I'm not pointing finger. Just an example. Might be. They're not giving 100% attention. Might be mama brought them by force. But as they are sitting here, they have been listening. Okay? Somewhere in the future, some situation comes. Is this seed that is planted going to help them? Yes. So what kind of investment are you doing every day? Well, that is going to decide your future. If you ask me, brother, what do you do every day? One, I increase my knowledge base through the Bible. And two, I use the Bible in such a way that solves people's problems. I always use the Bible in such a way that is so practical that a person can understand the truth and the fact. He can understand the right and the wrong. And he can make his own decision to rely on the word and make his future. He doesn't depend on the preacher anymore. He depends on the word who is God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And once he learns to depend on how to use the word and on his daily basis, he begins to go and solve other people's problem. Others he will be all the time waiting. Brother, when are you coming? Uh, I'll wait for you. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't need to wait. You need to use the word and wait on the Lord and trust the Lord and get the job done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was talking to Arun last night and I said, you know Arun, in my life, when I, by the time I was two months old, I was already casting out demons, laying hands on the sick, healing people. And I, did I know the Bible? No. I would listen to the sermon and, and come back and practice the sermon. And every person I met, I preached the same sermon. And they did not know that I knew only that much. <laughs> hey, are you listening? So, so if you are meeting 100 people, you are preaching the same message. And by the time you are preaching the same message for 100 different people, that message becomes flesh in you. You don't need to know the whole Bible. You need to know Jesus in the Bible. And if you know that little Jesus in the Bible, even little bit of Jesus in the Bible, and you go and talk that Jesus to somebody that Jesus whom you know will serve them you don't have to serve them Jesus will serve them hallelujah so do we all have Jesus do we all have testimonies do we have something that the Lord has done go and share that much you are already a preacher man I said you are already a preacher but the Bible says the Bible says when they went and preached the Holy Spirit was working with them. And when you are preaching what you experienced, Jesus, in your life, the Bible says the Holy Spirit confirmed what they preach with accompanying signs and wonders. Amen. What's your job? Preach. And what the Holy Ghost is going to confirm. Amen. You don't have to sweat to confirm. He is going to confirm. What's your job? Confidence in your relationship with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm a preacher. I'm wanted. Holy Spirit confirms what I preach. With signs and wonders. Everywhere I go, just like the shadow follows me, signs and wonders follow me. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Do you know why we don't see? Because we don't believe. How do I know how many believe? Hello, how do I know how many of you believe? Because those who believe will not waste their time till tomorrow. They'll call somebody tonight and talk to that somebody tonight and say, can I say a small prayer for you? And by the time they get up in the morning, the person calls back and says, I went to sleep and in the morning when I got up, everything is gone, man. <laughs> and they say, oh yeah, wow. That's how it works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right on. Jesus expected Jesus expected more understanding Jesus expected more understanding from his disciples Jesus expected more understanding from his disciples he had just he had just multiplied the food Praise God. Now my question to you is, if you saw with your eyes five loaves and two fish multiplied that 5,000 people were fed, what would be your response? Won't you be amazed? Hello? Yes. Okay, let's put it this way. Did the Israelites experience God sending 10 plagues in Egypt? Even the Passover night, did anybody die in the house of the Israelites? No. Did the Israelites experience the parting of the Red Sea? So did they see amazing, amazing, you know, beyond imagination miracles? Then how come they were still grumbling, murmuring and complaining? Hello? You know, if a person is sitting here and saying, Every day if I see the signs and wonders, my life is going to change. I've got news to tell you. Signs and wonders will not change you. There are so many times miracles have happened in your life. You see it, you get excited, you clap your hands, but the moment you left the door, you have forgotten it. Is that right? Yes. So what will change you? Understanding. Say that. Say that again. Say that again. What is the meaning of the word understanding? Huh? Practical working knowledge. Now, can you see my mic? Is it a mic or a camera? Have you ever seen a camera like this? I know that you have not seen. Now this one camera has got about nine cameras. And I can do all that editing as I'm preaching. But I'm not doing that. But it has got that working. So it has got many tools inside which I can use. But if I don't have the working knowledge, can I get it connected? Then you will say, uh, this can be used for paperweight. So what is understanding? Understanding is when you get a practical working knowledge. So what was Jesus doing? He was teaching the disciples and giving them practical 
working knowledge. But what was happening to the disciples? Their knowledge was based on what they saw. Their knowledge was not based on what Jesus said. Even today we have the same issue. Our way of life is all about what I see. Is the Bible saying life and death is in the power of my tongue? So out of my tongue, when I speak words, do I speak faith words or fact words? Do I speak about my problem or do I speak to the problem? So if I don't understand the spiritual laws, will I be able to operate in the kingdom of God? So just because I'm praying, does that mean that prayer is going to work for me? No, prayer is dangerous. If I don't understand the system and I open my mouth and I say a prayer which contradicts to God's word, that prayer itself will bring destruction in my life. Because the system works on what you speak out of your mouth and what you believe. So before even I start to pray, I must first consult what is the word of God saying to me in a topic or in a situation like this. And once I found it, now it's my turn to understand it, open my mouth and speak it because the Bible says, Jesus said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed then you can say so now I understand faith gets activated by saying in the same way fear gets activated by saying faith works for me fear works against me but they both work in the opposite direction but in the same way So, my believing will work on what? It will work on the basis of my understanding. Why do you think we talk, talk, talk all these two hours? Now, how many hours I spoke? Two and a half hours I spoke. Why do you think I spoke for two and a half hours? So that you get what? And when you get understanding now, can you go and do the same? Okay, let me ask you, ladies, when you got you went to somebody's house and you had a good cake lovely cake it was so tasty what will you say give me a give me that cake or will you say give me the recipe why not the cake the person gives you a cake but doesn't give you a recipe can you do you have an understanding now no can you make that cake no but what if the person gives you a recipe and gives you the explanation can you make the cake in the same way Jesus is telling his disciples, I have come to give you understanding how the kingdom of God works. And now that you have got the understanding, apply that understanding and then that understanding will bring belief, will bring confidence, will show you the manifestation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So what do we need more? Understanding. understanding. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, when you were in school and you went to the uh, school and there was a, uh, you know, science lab and the teacher would uh, do that experiment, would she give you understanding of what that experiment is all about? And when you understood practically how it operates, now, did it give you more confidence? Praise God. So write down. When Jesus said, when Jesus said to watch out, when Jesus said to watch out for the East, Y E A S T, when Jesus said, to watch out for the east that is in Matthew 13 33 13 33 
the east is doubt the east is doubt disbelief and tradition doubt disbelief and tradition of the pharisee the disciples got distracted by hunger the disciples got distracted by hunger and began fighting about and began fighting about not having enough bread that is mark 8 13 to 17 now let's 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 look at this what the pharisees teachers of the scriptures yes. were they the experts okay what jesus is disciples extremely learned and educated people okay what the pharisees knowing the scriptures what the fishermen knowing the scriptures like the pharisees no. then how come the pharisees could not perform any sign and wonder whereas the simple fishermen who were with jesus even raised the dead Hello. Did Jesus speak or read the scriptures from the same book that the Pharisees read? Yes, yes. Then how come when Jesus spoke there were signs and wonders, whereas when the Pharisees spoke there was nothing? Did they both speak the scriptures? Yes. How come one speaks and there are signs and wonders, the other one speaks and nothing is there? The Pharisees, they always use scriptures checking on people like a policeman to see how they can catch hold of people and punish them. They were like the policeman. Whereas Jesus used the scriptures not to punish people but to save them. Jesus was using scriptures with love, mercy, forgiveness and compassion. Whereas they were using scriptures how to attack people. Are, are, are you following? Are you following? So, so when they caught a woman in adultery, they use scriptures how they can stone her to death and at the same time trap Jesus and get him into trouble. Whereas Jesus in the same situation use scriptures how he can forgive that woman, save her life, transform her and make her a new person. So the question is, do you use scriptures out of love or do you use scriptures out of the law? Now when the disciples, when Jesus was risen and gone, did they use scriptures to change people's life or punish them? Are, are you following? Now, did the disciples use the scriptures believing in what Jesus said? Yes. 
Did the Pharisees believe in what they said? Hallelujah. So you might say a scripture by the wounds of Jesus I am healed a thousand times without is it going to heal you? There is a difference between unbelief and disbelief. What is the difference between unbelief and disbelief? Unbelief is a person even after explaining the scripture, the person still chooses to rely on his senses and not agree with the word of God is unbelief. Disbelief is a person who believes. He is all excited in believing, but the problem here is he has been taught something which is not true. So what has been taught to him which is not true and he believes just because he believes that what was not true does it become truth? It's still a lie. But does that person know that it is a lie? No. And that person is operating in unbelief. Let me give you an example. Shall we pray to God and ask him to move the mountains in your life? Yes or no? No? Who said no? Don't you want God to move the mountains of your life? Who said yes? Who said yes? And who said no? Yeah, Amparo. Yeah, tell me. Do you want God to move your, the mountains of your life? Why no? Why? And if yes, why? Huh? I'm talking about the mountains. Your problems. Do you want God to move the problems of your life? Yes, yes or no? Yes. That's where you went wrong. And that's where you are in disbelief. Because the Bible does not say God moves your mountain. The Bible says your faith moves your mountain. So now somebody will say, yeah, come on, let's storm heaven and ask God to move this mountain. That's, that's, that's disbelief. Because you are going against the scriptures. Because God never said he is going to move the mountain. He said, Jesus said, your faith moves mountain. Are you, are you following? Yes. So now, now most of the time, are we in belief or disbelief? Hallelujah. For example, example, when you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Is that right? Yes. Somebody will say, be careful when you lay hands on that sickness, that sickness will come on you. <laughs> Have you heard that? Yes. Is it there in the Bible? No. So what, what happened to that person? He is in disbelief. Because I was told the same thing. That sickness will come on you. And I choose to go and check in the Bible and read the whole New Testament and I found nowhere recorded. And when I found it nowhere recorded, it built my confidence that that sickness that is on that person cannot come on me because it's not recorded in the Bible. But if I have disbelief, then I don't even have to lay hands. It becomes a Wi-Fi connection. Because the Bible says, as you think in your heart, so it is. So if your thinking is, the sickness will come on you, it will surely come because you got a Wi-Fi connection. Are you understanding? Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So write down. Jesus was trying to prepare them Jesus was trying to prepare them for temptation. Jesus was trying to prepare them for temptation. Now, 
Have you heard the word temptation before? So what is temptation? Temptation. What is temptation? Huh? Huh? I don't want to do it, but still I do it. What you don't want to do? Huh? Anything wrong? So what is temptation? Okay. Tem write down, write down. Temptation is pressure applied to my thinking. Pressure applied to my thinking forcing me forcing me to move in a direction against God so are we all going to experience temptation come on so is it anything unusual to our experience temptation? No. no. Now what happens when a person is experiencing temptation? Does he have a choice or can Satan force him? He, everybody has got the freedom of choice. Satan cannot force you. He can put pressure on you. But the moment I make a decision to agree to the pressure that is coming that is drawing me away from God now that temptation has led me into action and that's what happened in the garden of Eden it was what temptation so temptation is knowledge that contradicts to God's word and it is presented in such a way that it looks to be the truth now was Jesus tempted yes did he face temptation? Yes. Did he give in to temptation? No. Did he fight temptation with scriptures? So how are you going to fight temptation? So what was Jesus doing? He was preparing his disciples to face what? Temptation. Hallelujah. So what is temptation going to do? Speak to you a lie in such a way that it makes you believe it's the truth. So the reason for temptation is to take you away from God. So every day do we go through temptations? Yes. Now what is the reward to a person who goes through temptation? Is there a reward? Yeah. There is a reward. Go to James chapter 2. 1 and verse number 12 blessed is the man blessed is the man that endureth what temptation blessed is the man that endureth temptation or blessed is the man that does not give into temptation for when he is tried he shall receive what the crown of life praise God have you ever seen uh, the world uh, a miss world contest when she wins she gets a crown how, how long how long does that crown remain with her and after that she has to give away the crown praise God and to get that crown how much of clothing she has to wear hello 
depends. She has to go through all that. And then she gets the crown. In the same, that, that is the, in the kingdom of the world. Now in the kingdom of God, there is a crown that is for your lifetime. And it is a crown of life. And this crown is received by anybody when he's tempted and he does not give into temptation but overcomes temptation, he receives the crown of life. So how many crowns do you have now? Hello? How many head do you got? So how many crowns do you have? So what happens when a person is repeatedly overcoming temptation? The crown begins to shine brighter and brighter and brighter. Now, when Jesus went through the fight after his baptism, did he overcome temptation? Yes. When he came back after his fasting and praying, did he come back with power? So did he have the crown shining extremely bright? Now did Jesus start his preaching ministry? Yes. What was the first thing he did? He started casting out demons. So a person who is on everyday basis overcoming temptation, the crown of life on his head in the spiritual realm begins to shine so much brighter that the demons take notice of you even from a distance and says don't mess with him. And when that person walks into any place, that whole place is destroyed of spiritual darkness. That's why wherever Paul went, he brought total, uh, total what? Total chaos in that place. Hallelujah. When Philip went to Samaria, the Bible says uh, the people who were practicing occult witchcraft and black magic, they brought all the articles and put it in the fire by one man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So when your crown is shining, when you touch somebody's hand and say just one line, the job is done. When a crown is not shining, the reason it is not shining is because of unbelief. And now you are speaking the same line over and over again and nothing's happening. Because you are full of unbelief. Hallelujah. Can you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, is the shine disturbing you? I know it's too bright. I hope it's not uh, closing your eyes. Praise God. The shine is too much. Hello. The shine is too much. How do you feel now? So every day, are you going to go through the trials of temptations? Are you going to win those battles? So when you come back, are you going to come back after the victory the same or with more power? More, power. more confidence? More fellowship with the Holy Ghost? Because you cannot overcome temptation without the help of the Holy Ghost. If you do it with the willpower, you can succeed for some time, but you will surely fall. But when it comes from the Holy Spirit, you have victory right from the root. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Lay right down. Jesus was trying to prepare them for temptation. Jesus was trying to prepare them for temptations. For temptation. But the disciples did not understand. 
but the disciples did not understand that they had the bread of life that they had the bread of life in their presence that is mark 8:18 to 21 Praise God. Okay, let's let's go and read it. Let's start with verse number thirteen. Mark eight chapter, uh, Mark chapter eight was thirteen. And Jesus left them and entering into the ship again, departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. and jesus charged them say take heed be beware of the leaven of the pharisees and of the leaven of herod and they reasoned among themselves saying it is because we have no bread and when jesus knew it he said to them why reason you because you have no bread pursue you not yet neither understand have you your heart hardened have you your heart hardened what is a hardened heart have you ever said have you ever heard this phrase that fellow his heart is so hardened what does it mean you that huh very dangerous what is can we talk can you understand what is hard to understand hard and hard ah huh? he has got no love he is a cruel person very very arrogant very very torturous is that called a hardened heart you know a hardened heart is a person who refuses to believe okay now did jesus did jesus in the presence of uh in the presence of the disciples multiplied the loaves and the fishes did he do it once or twice did they see did they collect the leftovers so were they sure about the miracle now when they had one bread with them did they have to bother about the one bread that they had why not the one who is going to multiply was with them but they did they recall what they had experienced just a few days just just a day back so even though they saw with their eyes did they continue to believe what they saw with their eyes or did they move into unbelief so what's a hard heart so do we also have a hard and hard hallelujah amen thank you jesus amen so so when a person has got a hard and heart the person is see see what he says 
Have you your heart yet hardened? Having eyes see you not, having ears hear you not. Do you not remember? Do you not? Do you not? Remember. When I broke the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took you up? They said unto him, twelve. And when the seven among four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments did you took it took you up? And they said seven. And he said unto them, How is it that you do not understand? Did they forget what they saw? Hallelujah. Now we learn that understanding is a practical working knowledge. So did Jesus show them that he multiplied the loaves? So now when they had one loaf, what were they fighting about? They don't have enough bread. Now did Jesus say be aware of the east? Be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees. So was Jesus cautioning them of doubting? What was the Pharisees having? They were having the scriptures. But did they believe in the scriptures or they were, were they uh, with unbelief? Come on. So how many miracles has God shown in your life? But still are you still worried? What is the reason for that worry? The heart is hardened. Your heart is hardened means you are extremely sensitive to the things that you see and you are full of unbelief to the scriptures. When a person's heart is not hardened, the person is extremely sensitive to the scriptures and his heart is hardened to the things that he see. Are you following? So most of the time are we sensitive to the scriptures or are we sensitive to the things that we see? Is our mind full of the things that we see or is our mind full of what the scripture says? So when my mind is full of what the scripture says, then I've hardened my heart to the problems that are coming against me. But when I'm sensitive to the problems, then I've hardened my heart towards the scriptures that speak about what Jesus has done for me. A heart is always hardened, either to the scriptures or to the problems. So if I harden my heart to the problems and sensitive to the scriptures, then I am never amazed by signs and wonders. Why? Because of my understanding. Okay. Uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Supposing, uh, not supposing, every time you make coffee, is it always bitter? And you put more coffee. Does it become extremely bitter? Okay. Then you put a, a good amount of sugar and start stirring it. Will you pray to God for the coffee to become sweet? Or, uh, or will it be sweet when you stir it, sugar into the coffee? And when you taste it, the coffee was sweet. Were you amazed? Hello, were you amazed? Why not? Come on, your bitter coffee became sweet. Come on. Aren't you amazed? Why not? Because you have understanding that sugar, when stirred, will always make the coffee sweet and therefore you are not amazed. And the reason you are not amazed is because of understanding. 
Are you following? Yes. So a person whose heart is not hardened, does he get amazed when signs and wonders take place? No, because for him it is extremely common. A person heart is hardened when he looks at the miracle and gets amazed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, the Praise the Lord. So most of the time our heart is hardened or sensitive. So where's the problem? With the scriptures, with others or your hardened heart? So to get rid of the hardened heart, what do you need? You need understanding. So what's the preacher's job? To preach. What's the preacher's job? Hello, what's the preacher's job? What's the meaning of the word preaching? The word preaching means to give understanding in such a way that by the time the preaching is over, the preacher has made the person change his thinking from seen to unseen. If the preacher has not succeeded in changing the congregation's thinking from seen to unseen, he has failed to do his job. So what does the preaching of the gospel do? The preaching of the gospel challenges you to change your thinking. To renew your thinking. To agree to what the word of God says. And only when that change takes place. Now your heart is hardened to the situation. And sensitive to the word. Okay. Let's take an example. Jesus is in the storm. Okay. And... Uh, the disciples are struggling. Now they wake up Jesus. And what do they say? Do you not care we are perishing? Now are their hearts so hardened that they have so much of unbelief that Jesus don't even care if they get drowned. Now what about Jesus? Is he in the same boat? Same storm? Is the boat filled with water? Is he still sleeping? Now when they wake him up, what does Jesus do? Does Jesus talk to the disciples or did he speak to the storm? What does he command it? To be still and be at peace. Now was Jesus' heart hardened towards the storm? Or did he, or was he sensitive to the faith? Did he believe that his word could stop the storm? Had he thought the disciples the same? But did they use the word? Is the Lord teaching us all this time? But if my heart is hardened, will I practice what was taught? But if I am sensitive, then the first thing I will do is go back listen to the talk again and again and again and get my heart sensitive to the scripture and harden my heart against every situation of my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when that happens, everything in your life begins to change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Finish? It took o'clock close. Okay, five minutes. Just five minutes. Did you understand? Isn't it wonderful that the Lord gave, used all this time to teach us so many things? Praise God. So write down. Just two more lines. Write down. Don't get sidetracked. Don't get sidetracked. by fears 
Don't get sidetracked by fears or need. Fears or need. Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. He has it all. Go to Jesus. He has it all. Just like he did for the disciples. Just like he did for the disciples. He keeps working with us. He keeps working with us until we get it. So, so when fear comes in, when worry comes in, okay, are we at that time focused on the word or are we focused on the situation? At that time, faith-filled words come out or fear-filled words come out? At that time, do we want to sidetrack ourselves? See, most of the time, are we looking at comfortable situation? Are we looking at the word of God? You are going through some situation, okay? And there is A and B. A, most comfortable, but not according to the word. B, difficult, but according to the word. Which one will you take? A or B? Because for us, it's all about getting out of this situation. But now, when you got out of that situation, did you follow the word or did you follow your fears? Fears. So when you followed your fears, at that time, was there any manifestation, things coming against you? No. But has the seed been planted? Yes. Will that decision in the future cause problems for me? Are you following? So even if you are facing the situation, don't sidetrack from what Jesus has said in his word. Stick to Jesus. He has the solution for every situation of your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I closed down with a testimony. Now, I saw a, a video of this man. Uh, this man was a rock star and he wanted to uh, become famous and earn a lot of money and that's why he was trying his best to earn fast money and he found a scheme by which he could make millions of dollars in no time by making a scam okay and it was a total you know uh, done in such a way that nobody could catch him and he was very confident but when the deal was over and the money came and all that thing he realized that the authorities came to know what had happened so he quickly took his wife and children and fled the country and went into a different country where with all the money that he got he built a big resort and he was living a good life hallelujah a few years went by and um, his father called him and said that the authorities had come home and were inquiring about you and now we have come to know what you have done so the mama was on a parallel line and she spoke to him and said son you can live in that country and save yourself but for the action that you have done even though you are in that country you are still in the wrong kingdom and when you die you are still going to hell but you can repent and set things right hallelujah and the mother told him if you receive Jesus now he will look after you and take care of you praise God and um, 
she led him to Jesus. He accepted Jesus. The father also accepted Jesus at the same time on the phone. And then she told her, uh, her son, remember Jesus says that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will be with you till the end of time. And then she said to her son, when are you coming back and giving yourself to the authorities? Now if he comes back, the imprisonment is only for 70 years. So if he is going to stay in the prison for 70 years, how uh, will he ever see the world outside? So should he come back or should he continue his life over there? So he tells his mother, listen, the deal was that I accept Jesus. The deal was not that I will come back and hand over myself to the authorities. So the mother gave him that scripture. A week later on, he called up his mother and said, I'm coming back. Praise God. So the mother called the authorities and said, my son is coming back to hand him himself to the authorities. And they were waiting for him and he got arrested and he was put in the prison. Praise God. Now when he was in the prison, he began, that one week he began his relationship with Jesus and when he was brought in front of the judge and when the judge heard that he, of his own choice, decided to change his life and become a better person and he surrendered himself, the judge reduced his imprisonment to four years. Okay, those four years he began to study the scriptures and he became a pastor inside the prison ministering to people, uh, the other prisoners. Praise God. Now when he was still a prisoner, he had to appear for his exam in Israel. So the court, even though he was a prisoner, gave him a letter to go and finish his exam in Israel. Hallelujah. There he met a woman. Praise God. And and this his wife divorced him. Praise God. And he met a woman there came back, got married to her and they both began to do the prison ministry and today that person has got prison ministry where he's talking to the prisoners the kind of life that he lived and how Jesus changed his life from 70 or 80 years imprisonment to 4 years imprisonment and because his life has changed he did not even have to stay for 4 years in 3 years they released him now my question to you is could he have the faith to believe that if he hands himself over there that his imprisonment would um, not be for 70 years? No. But yet he believed in Jesus. So when I believe in Jesus, the enemy will try his best to inject fear and doubt so that I do not walk with Jesus. But when a person continues to walk with Jesus, praise God, he will surely see Jesus in action in a supernatural way. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And just as Jesus was working with the disciples, the same Jesus works with us. Amen. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed moment. Thank you for teaching us all these truths. You, you, Your son is the bread of life, our nourishment, our fulfillment. And Lord, it is through your word that we overcome doubts, we overcome fears, we overcome every work of the enemy and we walk in faith every day in our life. Father, thank you for all these teachings and thank you for all the signs, wonders and miracles that you perform today and even as we are going and if there is anybody who needs Lord the word that they have heard as we pray together you continue to perform signs and wonders in their lives we thank you, we praise you in the glorious and mighty name of Jesus Amen, Amen. Yeah just give me just one small announcement 
Praise the Lord. Um, let us give Jesus.